Hi Bruins! My name is Drea Letamendi and I'm a psychologist in residential life and the interim director of the UCLA Student Resilience Center called RISE. Through these wellness video messages, I'm sharing tools and strategies for how our community can stay motivated, focused, and psychologically resilient during these challenging times. If you have a bit of anxious energy, let's work together to channel those feelings into a motivated and readiness state. You may have heard of Do The Five for staying healthy during the COVID-19 pandemic. Wash your hands, elbow cough, don't touch your face, keep a safe distance, and stay at home. According to the coping literature, there actually are five key psychological elements that will help us adapt during tough times. People do better mentally when they achieve a sense of safety, find ways to be calm, stay connected with others, have a greater sense of self-efficacy, and have a better sense of hope about the future. So let's talk about connectedness today. And this is important because personal relationships are crucial in maintaining perspective, elevating mood, and allowing distraction away from concerns that trouble us. Psychological scientists warn that in times of stress and illness, being deprived of social connection can create more stress and more illness. People who are lonely tend to have weaker immune responses to pathogens and are at risk for depression and other clinical conditions. Certainly, having a strong social support network is one of the best predictors of resilience. But social isolation is a difficult adjustment, and connecting is much more difficult now in our current situation. However, there's good news. Social distancing does not mean social isolation. Being connected does not require physical interaction. Maintaining your emotional connections means being disciplined, intentional, and creative about giving and seeking support. Here are three ways we can all manage stress and anxiety without being able to connect in person. One, we need to actually prioritize contact with our friends and family to maintain psychological health. Stay in touch with each other by phone, email, social media, or video chat, and intentionally draw from each other's experiences. It's okay to talk about what's going on and explicitly describe how you're feeling to people you trust. In fact, I encourage you to express yourself. Simply having the experience of others validating our reactions and sharing their own reactions can help us process how we're doing. This may not eliminate all your stress, but you will feel less alone. If you're on the receiving end, listen compassionately and convey that you understand and accept how the other person is feeling. Two, think creatively about how you can map on your normal activities onto your new environment. Use gaming and live streaming platforms to include chat features, schedule in Zoom socials, and attend clubs and orgs through virtual platforms. This includes expanding how you define your group identities. Now is the time to find opportunities to be more inclusive and accepting of others, and to even broaden our horizons in defining community. There's a lot of stigmatizing going on. It would benefit many of us to actually open up our doors, virtually speaking, to others. Get a sense of who may need extra social support and invite them. Connect them and welcome them into our social communities. When we're learning something new, we should set realistic expectations and be kind to ourselves. It might be helpful to try one or two things. For instance, maybe you're using platforms you've never used before, but be flexible with the learning curve and allow yourself time to adapt and grow. Three, help others. Acts of kindness can help us create meaning and purpose during these trying times, and it can truly benefit others who may be struggling. If you're able to, support others who are self-isolating by shopping or running errands for them. Remember to stick to essential shopping and activities. As students, you're encouraged to build mutual aid networks online that serve your more at-risk groups, like the immunosuppressed or immunocompromised members of our communities. For further ideas, coronavirus tech handbooks, Resource kits and other community response guides are available and searchable on Facebook. Also, CPO has basic needs resource guides with information shared by campus colleagues and community members who operate basic needs services for our campus. CPO also has a food closet which is temporary online. This includes the CPO Basic Needs gift card program, which will offer students up to three $75 gift cards that can be used at Ralph's and Target locations. The intent of these gift cards is to supplement student financial aid support and CalFresh benefits, as the CPO Food Closet typically does. Please go to their Instagram, at UCLA CPO Food Closet, and their Facebook, at UCLA CPO, to learn about these supports. Finally, if you're at UCLA in on or off-campus housing, seek your RA 
resident director, or community director for ways to stay engaged and connected to your community, either if you need to ask for help or if you're able and willing to help others. We know that social distancing is hard, but we're in this together. And remember, no matter where you are in the world, you're still a Bruin and we'll always keep the light on for you. Be well.